Hello everybody, my name is Full Salvo, and today we're going to be reacting to another, another few Bruce Dew episodes. This one is called Locked Out of the House. Here we go. Alright, now I know most people have gone through something like this before. You lock yourself out of your house because you're not paying attention. Now you gotta squeeze your fat butt through a window like an idiot. So I figured <laughs> I'd tell the story True. about when I locked myself out of the duplex that I used to live in. So I wake up one morning, I got the whole house to myself. My roommate Brewer's already at work slinging cigarettes at the Circle K. But I noticed that his dog's in my room and she's looking at me like, Hey, hole. it's 11 o'clock in the morning. You gonna take me outside or do I gotta sh living room floor like some kind of Olsen twin. So I take Brewer's dog out in the backyard. I'm still in my boxers and shit, half awake. Brewer's dog's out there taking a dump. Well, I can't go when you're watching me, you <laughs> big pervert. So we go to head back inside, but I realize that we can't because I shut the back door and the back door locks automatically. Oh boy, I think I just <laughs> myself. Brewer's dog's looking at me like, oh, you stupid <laughs> asshole. You locked us out of the house? It's November out here. We're gonna die. So I go to the front door and start ringing the doorbell. I'm hoping that the neighbor downstairs is home and he can let us in. There's people walking down the street and shit. Oh, what's that naked guy doing to that dog? I don't know. What a pervert. So now I'm starting to panic a little bit. I hurry up and run to the side door on the house, and to my surprise, it actually opens. But it only opens like three inches because there's a goddamn chain lock on the door. Goddamn stupid chain locks. We're gonna die out here, dog. We're gonna die, and it's gonna be all my fault. So I take my naked ass over the garage and try to come up with a game plan. I find this rusty ass axe in there, looking like it's from the Great Depression. So now I'm outside, chopping away at this goddamn chain lock, looking like some kind of pantless serial killer and shit. holy smokes should we call the police uh, no i'm just gonna pretend i didn't see this i don't <laughs> around with people that don't wear pants i get like six swings in and instead of breaking the chain lock i break the goddamn axe instead so now okay so i need to confess about something when i got when i was locked out of the house um when me and my mother were locked out of the house god rest your soul by the way um we didn't have our keys we did not have our keys because a friend of hers was borrowing the car and forgot to bring it back the next one. Life got to bring it back last night, so we took the cab home. Uh, I'm not going to bring a little details, but she took... We, I, I lived in a mobile home, so there was double windows. Like, you got one window that is meant that is like... Okay, like, here... Okay, you got one window that's meant to be damaged, broken... It's meant to be damaged, but it's hard to break. And then you got the window to the other side, which you can break easily. Because again, I live in Southern. I live. I live in Hurricane State. I live in a state where we get hurricanes. So in mobile homes, they had those kind of double windows. It was those kind of windows that could that you could take a plywood just launch it like terminal velocity and just just cracks, but doesn't break. It's a little double window. It's got one window that. Is meant to take plywood and all that up against it and then you got the other window behind it which is basically one that can shatter instantly so my mother basically had this cinder block it wasn't like it wasn't like this, this rectangular cinder block it was one of those cinder blocks you step on as a pathway to get like the door or whatever get up the steps yeah so she took the neighbors and just turned bang it up against the window like a maniac and I'm like Jesus Christ trying to get through the living room window <laughs> Let me tell you, it was, it was like a funny experience ever. Now, like I mentioned before, I gotta try to fit my fat butt through a window. But we live <laughs> on the second story. How the hell am I gonna get through a window that high? What am I gonna f***ing pole vault my ass up there? <laughs> so I go back to the garage, and this time I grab a 30-foot extension ladder. Now, I was 19 years old at the time. What the hell do I know about ladders? <laughs> Apparently, you're supposed to have a ladder at a 75-degree yeah. angle from the house. But I didn't do that. Instead, I set it up like an asshole, spread out all willy-nilly. Well, imagine to my surprise when I got two-thirds of the way up, and the whole ladder slides out from underneath me like some kind of goddamn Home Alone booby trap. I fall to the ground, land on my ankle sideways, Brewer's dog's just staring at me. Oh my god, we're gonna die out here in the elements thanks to you, you big idiot. All right, to hell with the ladder since I damn near broke my ankle. What if I go through one of the neighbor's windows instead and then go upstairs? That's breaking and entering, you idiot. You want to go to jail? Well, I mean, this is my house too, technically. I'd just be breaking into the wrong half of the house. So I open up the window to my neighbor's bedroom, and I hop inside. 
Now, it's a really weird feeling breaking into somebody else's house. I gotta say, I was quite uncomfortable doing it. Okay, this is no big deal. It's just a class 5 felony after all. <laughs> I start walking towards the door when all of a sudden I hear another door open. And it's my f***ing neighbor walking into his house. Or his half of the house, rather. And here I am in my goddamn skivvies in the middle of his bedroom. He's gonna come in here thinking I'm rifling through all his sh I'm gonna get arrested. I'm probably gonna be on the news and shit. Thank you for joining us at 30 o'clock news. This just in, we have a local pervert that was caught red-handed breaking into houses. We have Dan Peterson on the scene. Dan, what do you have for us? Well, Tom, Dan it appears Peterson. this weirdo got all naked and then broke into the wrong half of his house. Wow, what a pervert, Dan. What the fuck is the matter with that guy? I don't know, Tom, but we also think that he sexually assaulted this dog as well. Back to you. I freak out, start heading back for the window. My ankle's all screwed up. I'm hobbling along like Nancy Kerrigan and shit. I throw myself off the window like the building's on fire. Hurry up and shut the window. Okay, we're gonna pretend that didn't happen. I hurry up and go to the front of the house and ring the doorbell again. Oh, hey there, neighbor. You're probably wondering why I'm out here in my underwear with this dog. I assure you, it's nothing sexual. Now, can you please let us in the house before I have to commit another felony? <laughs> Bruce, dude. Okay, that's that's pretty relatable. That's, that's somewhat relatable. All right. All right. All right, so the next step video on from Bruce to is seeing Santa. Now, how many of you remember your... It's not raining. Get out of here, dog. It's not raining. Hang on a minute. Ah, damn. It's supposed to be cloudy. Oh, it isn't cloudy. Sorry, my dog is trolling me at the moment. Keeps opening the door. <laughs> Still opening the bedroom door. Anyway, how many of you have seen uh, Santa for the first time? How many of you remember seeing Santa for the first time? Well, I haven't seen this video, so. Not sure how this is going to play out. All right, now when I was a kid, Christmas was a big deal. And nothing was more important than going to see Santa and tell them what you wanted for Christmas. Because how else are you gonna let Santa know that you want that sweet, sweet Mario Kart game for the Nintendo 64? Now granted, you could just write him a letter instead and mail it to him. Dear Santa, thank you for getting me a Nintendo 64 last year for Christmas. However, I'm not sure why you got me Diddy Kong Racing to go with it instead of Mario Kart 64. Everybody knows Mario Kart 64 is the much better game, seriously? What the f***? P.S. I got you double stuffed Oreos to go with your milk this year. You know, the good shit. You can thank me later. You put your letter in the mailbox all excited and shit. Then you realize, oh yeah, that's right. I'm a dumbass little kid. I don't even got any postage on this goddamn thing. Santa's not gonna get this letter. What am I doing? So instead, you gotta go with your dumbass friends to see Santa in person. Hey, you know Santa's gonna be at the Kmart down the street today, right? What? Kmart? What the hell's Santa trying to do there? Score some smack? I have no idea, but my stepdad's taking us if you wanna go. All right, you guys ready to go see Santa at the Kmart? We sure are. Everybody got their pistols with them? We sure do. <gasps> whoa, 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 whoa. Man, they're packing heat. <laughs> they're packing some serious heat there. All right, looks like we're ready to go to Kmart then. Let's go. So you walk into that dirty Kmart all excited and shit. Oh, uh, yeah, excuse me. My daughter and my fake son are here to see Santa Claus. Oh, is that right? Well, Santa's over by aisle 12B. You know, right next to the used syringes and the semi-automatic rifles. You can't miss them. So there we are, standing in line to see Santa Claus. I heard that when you sit on Santa's lap, he can see every bad thing that you've ever done in your whole life. Oh, yeah, right, Michael. Shut the hell up. What is Santa, a sorcerer, reading people's minds and shit? Meanwhile, we're watching all these kids go up there. They got these long-ass lists of all the stuff that they want for Christmas. All I want for Christmas is a pet dolphin and a grenade launcher and the state of New Mexico. Those are oddly specific. They got some kids that get up there. They're scared shitless. They can't say a word because they're so damn terrified. What's the matter, son? It's Christmas. It's fun. Now go sit on this creepy old guy's lap so he can break into our house later. But not me. I was too determined to be scared. I knew you had one chance to tell Santa what you wanted, and you better make it count. Well, little girl, what would you like for Christmas? Dolphin dick. Uh, dolphin dick? Well, I guess if that's what kids are into these days. All right, little girl, you can have the dick of a dolphin. Finally, it's my turn to go see Santa. I get... Huh? Excuse me? Um... 
You wanna run that by me again? Hang on. You wanna run that by me again? Well, little girl, what would you like for Christmas? Dolphin dick! Uh, dolphin... This... <laughs> this bitch <laughs> actually said dolphin dick. Alright, we're, we're, we're going to move on. Dick, well, I guess if that's what kids are into these days. Alright, little girl, you can have the dick of a dolphin. Finally, it's my turn to go see Santa. I get up there, and I am all business. Yes, Santa, I would like to return this punk-ass Diddy Kong Racing for one Mario Kart 64, please. Uh, I don't think Santa Claus does returns there, kiddo. Oh, so you're saying that I totally risked my life in this goddamn Kmart for no reason then, huh? Well, your ass can kiss those double-stuffed Oreos goodbye. So then, of course, it's Michael's turn to go up there. He's got his stepdad whispering shit in his ear. All right, get up there and tell him you want a big screen TV for Christmas and you want Suzanne Summers from Three's Company. And if he's not going for that, tell him we'll settle for Joyce DeWitt if we have to, but we're not happy about it. Ho, ho, ho there, little boy. Have you been a good boy for Christmas? Uh, Santa, is it true that you can see every bad thing that I've ever done in my whole life? Uh, what? No, kid, what the hell are you talking about? What am I, a warlock or something? Oh, okay, good. Well, in that case, I've been a very good boy this year, Santa. Ah, uh, Michael, don't lie to him. You've been a dirty little bastard all year long. Yeah, why don't you tell him about the time you clogged the toilet with a goddamn G.I. Joe action figure? Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. And the time you took a shit in her own cat's litter box? Oh, yeah, I did that, too. And how about the time you ate a whole tube of toothpaste and all your farts smelled like spearmint for like a week? Holy smokes, you are a dirty little bastard, aren't you? Oh, well, I guess better luck next year. Well, thanks a lot, Michael. So much for my Suzanne Summers. I guess you're just gonna have to get ten across the ass for Christmas this year. Well, it wasn't the kid's fault. <laughs> All right. I'm still shocked. The whole dolphin. This third and final one is called Rat Hunting. So, if the paddle doesn't explain it all, then I don't know what will. All right, so this story is a little disgusting. It's a story about my roommate Brewer and myself living in a house infested with rats. Delicious. Now after all the haunted duplex shenanigans, me and Brewer decide to move into an even shittier house in an even shittier neighborhood. And instead of dealing with demon ghosts, we get to deal with a bunch of disgusting ass rats. I think I'd rather live with like a pissed off orangutan or something like that instead. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Bubbles, do you mind if we watch Netflix in here? <laughs> oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Now when we moved in, we obviously didn't know that the house was infested. But after a couple of days, we started seeing tiny poop pellets in the kitchen. Um, hey, have you been leaving little tiny turds around the house? Um, no. Huh. Well, I wonder what that's all about. It wasn't until one night I was in the bathroom taking a dump, I look over and I see the ass of a rat hanging out of a hole in the wall. Well, that's not something you want to <laughs> see while you're totally vulnerable taking a poop. Oh my God, what do I do? What do I do? Now, my first instinct was to uh, grab a pair of scissors and cut its tail off. But then what I the f***? That's f***ed up. It's like some Jeffrey Dahmer shit. What the hell's the matter with you? <laughs> I love the picture they put, that was perfect. So in mid-poop, with my pants around my ankles, I open the door and yell, RATS! We got rats in the house! Invading my privacy! Now it's important to note that this wasn't a mouse. A mouse is little, it's cute, it's friends with Donald Duck, people like mice. Rats, on the other hand, they're big, they're nasty, and they couldn't give two f about Donald Duck. Now my bedroom in this house was on the bottom floor, so that means I could hear the rats outside my door all night long. Now that's pretty damn disgusting. All I could think about was, well what the hell happens if one of them comes in here? Hey! Hey, what's the password to your Netflix account? We want to watch season four of Scrubs out there. I'd open my bedroom door. They'd all scatter every which way. But there was one big ass rat that was like twice the size of any of the other ones. That goddamn thing was like half the size of Brewer's dog. It was some Megazord of rats. And that goddamn thing looked like a boss from a Mortal Kombat game. It was not afraid of me at all. It'd just be staring at me like, the f are you looking at? Why don't you get in the kitchen and make me some bagel bites? So needless to say, we had a big problem on our hands. People stopped coming to our house and shit. I'm not going over there. I don't want typhus. Well, I'll be damned if I'm going to live up to my asshole and a bunch of rats. Desperate times call for desperate measures. So the next night, I'm laying on the living room floor with a BB gun. I got a cupcake out in the kitchen as bait. It's time to pull a Lee Harvey Oswald and assassinate me a few rats. Now, I actually got real footage of this fantastic... Oh, that's awesome. ...time in my life. Boom. Right there's the cupcake. 
buttercream frosting. It's delicious. And look who shows up. Fat ass rat looking to party. I take the shot and I totally fuck it up. Well, some Lee Harvey Oswald I am. <laughs> Jesus Christ, my ass wouldn't even uh, hit JFK's convertible shooting like that. So let's slow the footage down and analyze it like some little rat Zapruder film. Here's the shot. <laughs> And this goddamn rat does some Neo from the Matrix backflip bullshit. Oh. Yeah, uh, rats and mice have fast reflexes. For some f***ing reason, they do. I mean, it's been scientifically proven that if you put several, well, if you put mouse traps, that, that, that a few of them get lucky and escape from a mouse trap. But that's why mouse traps are so fast is that they catch 99.9. With my goddamn bullet. Okay, so clearly the BB gun is not gonna work. Time to move on to rat poison. We sprinkle a bit of rat poison right on the front step of this asshole's house, and sure as hell, the next day it's all gone. They damn well lick that plate clean. Two days later, I go in our basement and there's four dead rats on the ground. All right, job well done. But wait a minute, where's that big bastard at? That goddamn Megazord rat is nowhere to be seen. Two more days go by. I'm sitting in my room watching TV, and lo and behold, the big kahuna himself comes crawling across the floor in broad daylight like somebody's drunk uncle and just dies right there in the middle of the living room and here's a picture of that goddamn thing i uh put a little taco <laughs> bell packet in there so you could get a reference of the size that's a really big rat jesus uh-uh i wouldn't even use a bb gun with that i use a i use an actual gun i wouldn't care i wouldn't care about those disturbance i'd use an actual pistol before we could celebrate, Brewer's dog. And yeah, Peter, I said an actual pistol. I don't care what you say, Peter. You know what? Let me tell you something about Peter. Peter is just the kid, the rich kid that wasn't in spot, that wasn't invited to any birthday parties, but shows up anyway just to take a dump on the birthday cake and the birthday presents and the birthday clown. Not specifically in that order. Yeah, I said it. And that was also a reference to Jacksepticeye's tweet about PETA in response to one of PETA's tweets. Get roasted. Prances on end. She sees that dead rat and she's like, oh, what do we have here? A dead rat full of disease and poison? Well, I better have a lick. Ow. Now, now, now. Now, shortly afterwards, I walk out there, see Brewer's dog making out with this rat carcass. The dog looks up at me like, well, I wasn't just going to leave it there. I'm a dog, you stupid ass. <laughs> so I panic. I call up Brewer while he's at work. And I'm like, uh, your dog was just licking a dead rat like an ice cream cone. You got any last words you want to say to her? But she was all right. We took her to a vet afterwards, and they gave her some medicine. How about you don't let your dog eat dead rats? So her house was officially rat-free. Nobody got typhus. And I could poop in peace again. The end. Yeah, happy ending. Brewstew.com. Anyway, that is all for today's episode. If you uh, like the episode, then please hit the like button. If you want to see more, comment which which which. which uh, uh, there I go, not speaking English again. Damn it! Might as well put me in Pulp Fiction too. Shit. Anyway, uh, if you like the video, please hit the like button. If comment, please comment which one's your favorite so far out of the two episodes of Bruce out of all these episodes. And uh, if you want to see more videos from me, or you're reminded of more videos from me, then be sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and hit all notifications. And I may see you in the next video. As always, peace.